she loved this life, the strange familiar. Toby Martin has written a series of songs from a front porch in Northam Avenue and he joins us now to talk about Bankstown Live and share a song with us. Toby, thanks so much for coming in. Thanks for having me. Hi. Toby, how did you become involved in Bankstown Live? I was asked by Urban Theatre Projects to take part in a residency program um, in 2013 called Practice and Participate. There were a whole lot of artists, visual artists, choreographers, writers, musicians, were asked to like set up shop in someone's front yard in Bankstown and for two weeks. And my spot was in Northam Avenue where Bankstown Live has actually taken, taken place. Um, and I set up in a, in a house that no one actually lives in. I ended up writing a fair few songs in this. I just had this like this desk, an umbrella against the sun, my guitar, my little, you know, cassette dictaphone. And then I did a second one on a different street in Bankstown. And that one was out the front of a, uh, a coffee shop. Um, Northam Avenue is relatively a quiet street. Chapel Road South is a, is a much busier place. There's a lot more traffic. There's more pedestrians. It was a pretty popular coffee shop. I'd, you know, pretend I was writing songs. <laughs> really, I was just drinking coffee and talking. And I realised as I looked back over the nine or ten songs that I wrote that a lot of them were about um, a parent talking or thinking about their children. Mm -hmm. um, I hope that the songs are not so much about me and they are more about um, fictional characters, which are then hopefully a little bit more universal. I think that is something that only really could have happened with so many conversations and such a sort of deep connection with the people around me who were at my workplace, really. Can you tell me a bit about your performance at Bankstown Live? Because now you're kind of out of the shadows, I guess, of of Northam Avenue and the Milk Bar and you're performing these songs to people. In what kind of context will you be doing that? We have a little stage in, in the front yard of this great old kind of 1930s sort of bungalow house with a just classic Australian front lawn. So I play with um, four other musicians and I was really interested to in exploring what kind of musicians were in the Lebanese and Vietnamese community. So I have... Alex, who plays oud, which is probably familiar to most listeners. Um, it's an Arabic guitar sort of instrument. Muhammad plays the kanoon, which is a very unusual and special instrument. Muhammad is, is possibly the only kanoon player in Australia. It's a very beautiful dulcimer-like instrument, very old. I think eventually they put it in a wooden box and called it a piano. It's, it's that kind of thing, and, uh -huh. and he's amazing. Muhammad and Alex often play, you know, Lebanese weddings and kind of events that require more traditional music, but... They are great musicians and they've been very flexible to my kind of way of playing. So, yeah, they've been great. And the other two musicians uh, who play traditional Vietnamese music is um, Anne Lin, who plays a zither, and Fu, who plays a monochord, which are both really interesting instruments. And, yeah. That's interesting that your band's not made up of sort of a traditional... Aussie band situation like a bass and drums like you've got some really interesting sounds coming out of this community with your music how does your music fit together with these with these different sounds Anne Lynn um, who plays the zither was uh, a little bit hesitant about it at first she didn't think it was going to work I didn't have a very good knowledge of those kind of m music traditions before I began this project but I guess my own tradition of like indie rock is mm. open to experimentation so I was like you know let's just see and see if it works. And I, th I, think, I think it does. Like, yeah. And you're going to play a song for us now? Yes. This is one of those uh, parent songs <laughs> that I was talking about before. Um, and this is actually about no one on Northam Avenue. It was the initial spark of inspiration was there was a car across the road that had its window pane was replaced with, like, plastic. You know, people get that before they get the new window. So I was just thinking about how that happened and then it turned into this story of my own. It's about a mother's disbelief of what's something that her children have done, you know. And it's called Correctional Complex. All right. Thank you, Tony. On mornings like this, I almost forget. I just went five minutes with a hit answer in my head. And then like a solid punch in the guts I remember I remember I remember And think how could I forget 
Oh, I remember when he was only five, laying the table with the good forks and knives, and it's different when you know them. It's different when you know them. It's different when you know them. driveway hasn't started for six months it's got a plastic sheet for a window from the night he punched it and now it takes three buses to get to the facility but I still make the trip three times a week and I remember I remember I remember the phone call When I finally knew Felt like a screen door hanging open The wind just blew right through Me When I get home, I open up his room The afternoon sun shines on Skeletor and Doctor Doom And I know what it's like to hold your own flesh and blood How could he do that to the little body that he loved? And it's different Toby Martin with Correctional Complex and you're listening to RN Books and Arts. My name's Melanie Tate. <laughs> 